Thank you for coming, everyone. I'm Jordan Kelly. I'm the executive director for Great Works Regional Land Trust, and we're here today for the Tuckahoe Trail opening. Um, I also would like to say that this is part of the uh, Salmon Falls River, and that we're also looking to uh, acquire another 70 acres with a significant uh, water frontage along the Salmon Falls River. It's the Salmon Falls Tidal Waters Project, and we're very excited about it. We Definitely need our members and new members to support us as we acquire this critical habitat. Um, I also want to mention that we're uh, adding on Bonnybeg Mountain. Um, that's a new uh, preserve and project that we're trying to acquire soon. Uh, I would also just like to thank everybody for coming today and we're doing great things at Great Works. And I'm going to turn it over to Michael to give a little history of Tuckahoe. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm Michael Wright, uh, board member of Great Works Regional Land Trust, resident of Berwick. Um, I was project manager for parts of this, uh, what we call the cons uh, Salmon Falls Conservation Area. Uh, it occurred in uh, 2004, uh, Tuckahoe turf farm owned this property and they had uh, clear cut and put drainage and whatnot we were planning on expanding their turf fields. Uh, EPA got a hold of the uh, information that they had violated some wetland regu regulations and uh, uh, what ensued was uh, um, uh, Tuckahoe Turf Farm signed a consent decree um, uh, they they were they agreed that they would um, uh, not expand here. Um, they actually donated a parcel to a Great Works Regional Land Trust. They paid a twenty-five thousand uh, dollar fine, and they were told they had to tear up all of the um, uh, drainage that had been put in. There were two parcels originally. Um, with the uh, settlement, there was uh, a parcel, which was a uh, 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 parcel they donated to the Great Works Regional Land Trust, and then there was also a, another section that was uh, placed in a conservation easement. Tuckahoe still owned it, but Great Works had a conservation easement on it. Uh, later that year, 2004, Tuckahoe decided to donate that to uh, Great Works as well. That was fine. Um, it was all clear cut. Um, you can see from some of the aerial maps where the wetlands were um, impacted and whatnot. Uh, we were excited to have this property, a lot of river frontage. Berwick and Summersworth, New Hampshire both draw their public water supply from uh, Salmon Falls River. So as we're interested in protecting the water quality here as well. We initially started having um, hikes out here would do it in the winter time because it was just too wet to put a trail through that part of the property and uh, we came out here and would uh, ski across or hike or snowshoe whatever uh, so I looked around and uh, we ended up applying to the North American Wetland Conservation Act for funding and uh, we actually did uh, made the uh, uh, application and uh, we're lucky enough to have it accepted. It's a, a wonderful piece of property. NACA is uh, designed to protect um, habitat for migratory birds and it turned out that this property is up in the uh, upper 25 percent range of uh, properties uh, with uh, high values for migratory birds birds. So we're able to purchase this property. Um, uh, we're very excited about that. Um, another property just down the river came. It, it actually abuts this property. We call it the Keybrook property that came up the following year. I believe that was 2015 or so. And I was able to apply to a Maine Natural Resource Conservation Program to purchase that property as well. So um, we have uh, basically what, four pieces of the Salmon Falls Conservation Area, wetlands area. It's the, the, the two parcels from 
the original uh, Takaho purchase, uh, this uh, third purchase from George Bates, and finally the um, uh, Keybrook property. Uh, I do want to say that when we purchased this property, we had um, matching funds. Uh, the town of Berwick contributed $10,000 towards this purchase. Uh, Piscataqua Region Estuary Program contributed $5,000. Uh, I think it was $40,000 matching fund from the sale because uh, the sale price was a, a, a bargain price when the appraisal came in. And uh, Great Works Regional Land Trust contributed, I think it was like $22,000 towards the purchase. So here we are today. It's uh, finally open to the public and um, I'm hoping that you'll all come out and and enjoy the uh, the river frontage and the beautiful open spaces here. Thank you very much, Jill. Hey, hi. <laughs> hey, hi. My name is Jill Crosby. I'm the stewardship director for Great Works Regional Land Trust, and I wanted to thank everybody for coming today and so supporting Great Works and and all that we do. Um, so as Mike mentioned, this parcel is made up actually of three pieces. Two of the pieces have a conservation easement on them, and the third piece is the most recent one that we um, acquired that connect the conservation easement area to the Keybrook um, parcel. So the conservation easement does have certain restrictions, so the properties will always be managed, even though we would do it anyway, um, for natural habitat and um, protecting the water resources and the forest. Um, so Great Works does a lot with uh, our own fee properties and management plans, but when we acquire a property that has a conservation easement, that just gives even more specific management tools that we can um, use. This piece here, the RC um, Ponderosa Flying Club had been using as an airstrip, so they're a um, remote controlled airplane uh, club, and so they have continued, we, we, we continue to lease a section of the property to them to continue to use, um, which they're wonderful people to have out here. Uh, the trail that uh, we're going to walk today has been um, in the works for, as Mike said, for several years. All our land is public and open to the public, but now we have an official trail with a kiosk and a trail sign. Um, we're calling it the Wintergreen Trail. It's about a one mile loop that goes out and walks along the river and then comes back. So it's just a great opportunity to finally put all these pieces together um, that we've had support from the members as well as from the town of Berwick. We couldn't do it without all of you and all of our volunteers that helped to cut the trail and put in our kiosk and our street sign. Um, it's just a wonderful day to celebrate um, all the work and all the support that Great Works, get, great works gets. So thank you so much. So now we are going to go for a hike and, and do the walk and it's about a mile loop and it's there are some sections that we still need to work on that are a little wet as Mike said it is a wet site um, and at this time I should say at this time we don't have a connection to Keybrook because the Keybrook estuary separates these two it's been talked about for many years and maybe at some point we'll be able to make um, that connection uh, but for right now we're just going to go do the loop and come back and we do have a trail map um, a new trail map that we have um, on our website and we'll be doing a formal kiosk sign in the near future as well so that's if anybody would like to go for a walk we can do that Thank you. Does anybody have any questions before we head out? Uh, my name is Jordan Kelly. I'm the executive director of Great Works Regional Land Trust. Uh, the Land Trust has been around since 1986. It's a group of dedicated people that want to see the special places we come to appreciate and remain conserved for for everyone forever is our motto. We're based in Ogunquit. We have our offices at Beach Plum Farm 
Uh, we're hoping to have more events there this summer. It's a beautiful place next to the ocean. Um, if you want to become a member, please go online to gwrlt.org or stop in and see us. We're always going out on trail and we're your local land trust and we're happy to be here. We have 20 preserves, uh, 35 miles of trail. We've conserved over 7,400 acres. Mm -hmm.